Right, everyone, this is our the end of our monthlies, and this is uh, the Armoured Sleeve of the Samurai, and we're at the end of this month, and it'll be in the playlist. Now, don't forget, Scott from Sengoku Studies has done some other ones. Unfortunately, I don't have the internet at the minute, as you all guys know, so I can't grab pictures from his stuff. So let's have a quick look through this. So number one is that Kamura no Ita. So if you look, it's like a little crowned um, comb over the top. Now number two is actually a ring, the Shikan no Kan, which is a ring, so it's not shown here though, it's on the reverse of it. And if you look at number three, it's Tekubi no Himo. Himo is cord basically, and uh, it's Tekubi is the neck of the arm. So it's basically a wrist cord, um, which is there. Um, number four is the finger loop, and that's Tsumami. Tsumami. Okay, and that's the finger cord. And I never knew the word for that until we did this uh, book. Then if you look at number five, that's Teko. That's actually the armoured gauntlet. A lot of people know this. A lot of people know the word Kote to mean sleeve and Teko to mean armoured gauntlet. Now, number six is Mugiwara. Mugiwara. Now, these are small reinforcement plates. You can't quite see me. That's just the chain mail, but it's just giving you an idea of where they are. We'll move on to the reinforcement plates in the next image. Number seven is, uh, it's actually called Kesho no Ita, but it's actually just a band that comes below. It's just an area there around below the comb shaped top. Um, number nine is Kushigata. Kushigata, and you can see that's just the very, very sort of upper plate top there on the, uh, on the, the we, we called it a comb really, which is a bit of a, I suppose a strange word, but you get the idea. And this number nine is actually the toggle for attaching to the sleeves. This is Kote Tsuke no Ko Haze. Okay, and as, um, so number nine, there's actually a toggle behind which attaches to the sleeves. And we're gonna talk about that because um, Scott from Sengoku Studies was telling us that those wrap around one pieces were quite rare at the time. Most were in a different style. Let's look at that. So on the, um, on the last one, we talked about the toggles for attaching the sleeves or the toggle and loop system. And this is Kote Tsuke no Kohaze and this is number one these are these little toggles that connect to loops and keeps the sort of sleeve up if you know what i mean and keeps everything in place um number two uh, again is the crown plate kamuri which is it means crown plate and then um then we get uh shirushi no o now if anybody's got any any idea on this number three the marking cord so let me know if you know anything about number three uh, people out there again we've got the finger loops you can see number four around the sort of the finger loops go underneath again number five is the teko hand cover uh, covering now tekubi is the cuff here because and that's number six sorry there's actually a cuff place because in some of the other images uh, or some of the other styles you have a not an armored plate but a weird little frilly cuff like the old english stuff which is strange um now let's look at number seven. They're called Ikada, which are floating plates. They're reinforcements. And number eight is the Hijigane, which is elbow protector. Basically stop you smashing for el from elbows. Which leads us to number nine, which is Gaku no Ita. Okay, number nine. Now this is a reinforcement plate on the sleeve. You know, obviously it's an armored sleeve. So we get different styles. We get Fuku Bei, which is gourd style, that of a gourd. They're quite famous and popular actually. Keshi, poppy seed style, and Botan, which is button style. It's actually in katakana, it's Botan, and it means button because they, uh, of course, uh, I don't know. Does anybody know if the Portuguese use the word button or is the English that use the word button? What is the Portuguese for button? when the uh, Jesuits were going into Japan. Anybody out there who speaks Portuguese, 1600s, uh, 15, 1600s, what was the word for button? Was it actually button? Actually, a lovely poem in this book, which was written again in the 1600s, it's, warriors align their arrows within their quivers as, hails, uh, as hail falls upon their gauntlets in the bamboo fields of Nasu. A lovely old poem there. Oh, the author of the manual, Isui Sensei, tells us that this style here with the arm bent, remember the other one didn't have an arm bent here, uh, is actually called Inarigote, which is uh, it's a reference to the fact that the, the sleeve is actually sewn at an angle. It's not, like that's not an image of someone's arm in it, it's actually sewn to have an angle in it so that it's easier to fight and you're not stretching against the material. So uh, there you go. Let's now have a look at uh, Yugote no Koto, the um, archer's gauntlet. 
So now this leads us on to the um, the archer's gauntlet. Okay, so that is you gote. So basically, small sleeve um, for an archer. Right. Um, again, number one is called Kamuri. This is basically the comb edge, the edge of something. Um, now, Moro Kagaki, Gari, sorry, Mo, sorry, got that wrong. Moro Kagari, which is the lacing, is number two. So you notice this is laced up on the inside. Um, number three is the Kiku Toji, which um, basically means ruffle. So there's like a little weird ruffle. It's, it's like the um, old stuff from the old English stuff, which is, is weird. Uh, then number four is keshi, which is the fold of the cuff. It's a bit difficult to explain this without a proper picture, but remember guys, I'm having to work from pictures from my book because uh, I don't have the internet here where I am at the minute. Uh, number five is just basically the, um, the tekubi, the cuff, you know what I mean? It's just saying this is where the wrist goes. And um, number six is the ie ura, which is the lining. So you've got lining. Now this is made of really, really nice um, cloth it's brocade and this goes over I think this goes over your sleeve fully and it's to stop the um, arrows getting caught uh, sorry the string of your bow getting caught on the sleeve now this is really interesting now if you're listening to this point guys this bit there as you can see the toggles go on the top so we're looking at the inside of the sleeve it's tightened up laced up so that the bow string doesn't get caught on it but hold on a minute I hear you say uh, bow strings in Japanese archery go around on the outside. They don't go down like that. Well, actually, that's ceremonial archery. It's um, not the archery samurai would have done. The bow string of a samurai archer would go straight past his hand, just like a Western one, right straight down the inside of the arm. It doesn't flick out the other way. Um, I've, we've seen this in old footage of some of the older war schools of archery. It's something that nobody really points out that much. So. Instead of the, uh, you know, in the classic Japanese, the bow goes and the string goes right round and releases and there's a perfect release for it and everything. Uh, they go, the actual archers back in Sengoku times most likely shot their arrows and it spread down the sleeve. Otherwise, there would be no reason to have an archer's sleeve whatsoever. So, um, but there's obviously more research to be done and lots more things to be done. So all of this information comes from Samurai Arms, Armor and the Tactics of Warfare. Please do get yourself a copy. I'm sorry for not having as many pictures at the minute, guys. I'm not going to have the internet properly for a couple of months. I've got to make my videos in my new caravan office while we're building and then find a Wi-Fi hotspot and put them up. Uh, something else that actually we could ask Matthew Okohara is in this book it does say, so remember in this book is 1600s, it does say that um, people who use guns, so Teppo, should not have Teko armoured gloves, they should be bare, bare handed um, and that quote is in here. So I wonder if that's just in this school or if that is common throughout, we're not quite sure. Okay guys, I hope you enjoy that, don't forget to play the playlist. Now next month we're going to go through this. These are Gesan and they are the sort of top thigh groin protectors and they are different from Hayadate. Now, in English, these are called tassets, but I assume that's a French word. Can anybody tell me the correct pronunciation for the word tassets? I've said it that way, but like ballet and other things that are French spellings, they're probably said totally the opposite way. So somebody let me know the correct pronunciation for that, please. Um, but we'll be working on these. So hopefully Scott's still with us. I know um, Nick from the Shogun has been busy, so I'm not sure what where he's up to at the minute and uh, hopefully if anybody else wants to join us, we're, we're down to just me and Scott at the minute, which is a bit of a shame, but at least there's a couple of us keeping it going. And we've got an amazing playlist now on Samurai Armor. I've called it the Samurai Armor Guide, just to let everyone know it's about armor, because that's what we've pretty much done for the year. So there you go, guys. See you next month.